So welcome to the tutorial on how to build this uh, owl-shaped board. Before we get started today, remember uh, safety precaution, wear safety glasses. Understand that you're probably going to be working with a hot soldering iron, there's no playing around. And uh, also understand that you're probably going to be working with a lead-based solder, which means you should wash your hands after, you know, soldering. Right. Work in a ve well ventilated area or make sure that you have some sort of fan uh, or a fume extractor to remove the, the fumes. So how should we get started? Well, let's talk more about the user's guide for a minute. So on the website, we'll have a user's guide, and I'll link to it in my video. This basically tells you how to build a board, uh, precautions to take, safety and liability, uh, components, resistor cover code, schematics, how to assemble and solder the board, what's an example of what to do, what not to do, uh, some more schematics. The bill of materials down here listing the parts that you'll need for this board. Uh, there is also board setup over here uh, describing the Arduino pin numbers and some other information. And then we have basically installation guide for Arduino and some instructions on how to install the drivers. So that information is all available on the, uh, the website. So let's get started today and figure out how we're going to build this board. Well, let's, let's get started with something easy. Let's get started with the resistors. The resistors are easy because they're non-polarized. Uh, you can insert them in either orientation and you'll be fine. So the first one I'll start with is the orange, orange, brown, gold resistor. These are going to go into R1, R2, R12, R13, and R14. So let's start inserting, keeping in mind that they it doesn't matter the orientation of the resistor. And when I insert them in, I'm going to bend the leads back a little bit just so um, just so they stay in place while I put more resistors in. So when you build this kit, it may either come with 10K or 1.5K resistors. Uh, either is fine for the next step. Uh, either resistor you have, you're going to put it into R6 over here, or, and uh, R4, sorry, R4 and R7. Let me lock the focus for a minute. Okay. The last two resistors are going to be the these two these two resistors. They're going to be uh, blue, gray, black, and gold and they're going to go in the two remaining spots on the board. Again, all these resistors, uh, the polarity doesn't matter. You can insert them in either way. Okay, we've inserted all the resistors and I'm going to start soldering. 
bring this down a little so uh, you can see. When you're soldering, you want to have the iron touch both the pad and the pin. Okay. If you see a ball of solder forming, it means that you've put too much solder. Like here, we have the correct amount of solder because it's not balling up. And it looks kind of like a Hershey's Kiss shape. Oops. So let me, this is a smaller board, so I'm going to start trimming after I solder it. And I missed a hole, so I'll fill that one in right now. So while we're on the back, let's do the two surface mount components. R11 is your fuse. So you'll need tweezers to grab the fuse, but before you grab the fuse, what we'll do is this. I'll fill one side of the pad. Okay. And then I'll take the fuse. The direction does not matter. So I'm just going to heat up that pad again, stick the fuse on, making sure there's enough room on the other side to come back and solder the other side in. Let go. And then we're going to go back and fill the other side in. Okay. And that's it. The other thing is the surface mount uh, voltage regulator. So here's a voltage regulator that's going to go in this spot. We're going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to fill that big pad in. And then I'll use the tweezers to pick up the part, plop it right in. Making sure that you leave room on the other side uh, to solder to. Come back this way. And I'm going to fill in on this other side. and I'll fill in the remaining uh, through holes up here. When you're trimming the leads, uh, they kind of tend to go flying, so try to grab them so they don't hit anyone. So we've gotten all the the through hole resistors done. 
The next step is probably the buttons. So let's do the buttons next. If you look at the buttons, the buttons have tabs that come out to one side. See? Um, the tabs that, the side that the tabs come out of should be uh, placed as such. It doesn't matter if you flip it around this way. You know. Uh, but you should not do this. You should. It should not go in like this. If you have to force it in, it and it, it it will not work. So make sure that you have it in the correct orientation. I'm gonna push that right in. I'm gonna push the next one right in. Then go back on the other side and then fill in the holes. Flip the board over. What we have left, we have capacitors. And in some cases, capacitors are polarized, but the ones we're using are ceramic. Um, so they are not polarized. You can insert them in either orientation. They go into the spot right here, C2 or C1. Insert them in any orientation you want. I'll, bet, I'll flip it over and bend the leads so that we make sure they don't fall out. As you touch the board, remember you're, you're going over the board with the soldering iron, uh, so the board is going to be warm and some components will be very hot, especially those that you just soldered. So I'll just go ahead and trim these weeds. Okay, so we might as well do the USB port now. So on this side of the board, the USB port goes in as such. Okay. I pressed it in, and all I'm going to do is start filling in the solder. port is now in place. Let's do the LEDs next. The LEDs are polarized. It's hard to see on camera, but there's a flat side to this. So essentially if we look at the board's face, you see one flat side, right? The flat side of the LED goes towards the flat side uh, of the board, uh, the flat side indicated by the silk screen right here. So here, uh, the LED uh, polarity is indicated by either that flat side or we can look at the lead length. The lead length, the shorter lead goes towards the flat side. So shorter lead goes to the flat side. Again over here, the shorter lead goes to the flat side. I'll bend the leads so they don't move. And the last one, uh, LED, is going to be this, this RGB LED. There's also a flat side, but I don't think it's really noticeable. Oh, I don't think it's really noticeable on camera. Uh, so what we want to do is look at the flat side on the board. There's going to be second uh, pin will be the longest pin. So second pin longest from the flat side and then we can place it in. 
Make sure you get your orientation on these components correct because if you don't, they will not light. And I'll bend these leads again. So go ahead and solder these into place. And I'm working without any helping hands or, or any uh, jig, but you may want to work with it, uh, some sort of helping hands, uh, like this one right here. I'll solder these. The, the LED over here spacing is a little tricky on the RGB, so be careful as you try to solder it. Make sure that before you plug this anywhere near your computer or into your computer that you get someone to take a look at it. Remember that we are not responsible for damage to your computer. So I'll go ahead and trim these leads on the LEDs. And if you did bridge this, if you did bridge the LED, what you would do, and let's pretend that we bridged it, right? Let's pretend that we bridge it. So I'll bridge it. Oh, and it's blobbed between two pins. All we have to do is take some solder braid and, or solder wick, and place it there on that pad or, or on that blob. Wait a little bit, and then the wick should take care of the the blob, the bridge. Okay, so essentially we've assembled the entire board except for the microcontroller. The microcontroller is going to be what actually blinks the lights and allows you to do stuff with the computer, and this is a microcontroller right here. You look very closely at that top area there's a, a notch over here you have to make sure that the notch on the microcontroller matches the notch on the board so let's make sure that and then we're gonna place it in okay and I'm gonna bend the leads a little just to make sure it's easy to uh, uh, it stays in place rather and I'll just fill in the holes on the microcontroller. Remember, if they're blobbing up into circles, your solder is blobbing up into circles, you're using way too much solder. Okay, so I believe we're done soldering. Before you plug this into your computer, make sure that you have someone take a look at it for shorts and bridges. As another example, let's say I purpose, let's purposefully bridge these two pins over here. Watch it not, not work when I need a, need a bridge. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there's a bridge right there, right? There's a clear bridge right there. Sometimes you can get away with cleaning the tip of your iron and just heating it up, and it'll go away. Other times, you'll need to pull out the braid and uh, wick away the excess solder, okay? So after we've checked, let's go ahead and uh, plug it into a computer.
on this particular board, the left eye is the indicator indicating that the board is power. The other things won't turn on until you program it. Remember, when you plug this into your computer, uh, we are not liable for any damages caused to your computer. Uh, remember that you're building this board yourself. You plug it into your own computer at your own risk.